Thank you very much, Money Plays. Thank you very much, Sal. Sal, the most impressive, unimpressive host of all time, comes out here. You can tell Sal works out all the time, wears cargo pants, like this man can be intimidating. And then he comes out here, he's like, hey, you guys ready to get your socks rocked? Huh? We all ready to have a good time? I'm a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll, so watch out, everybody. <laughs> Adios, motherfuckers usually make people more intimidating. Sal just like goes full on family Disney. And that's awesome. That's why I appreciate you, Sal. I, uh, I just graduated, just graduated from the University of Nevada, Reno, which is, yeah, four claps is appropriate for where I come from. Thank you for that. Uh, I got my degree in uh, political science and international affairs, which is like saying I got my degree in fairies and goblins. Don't laugh yet, sir. See, I said political science. This guy was like, ha, 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 you homeless fuck. You will never have sex ever. That's totally true. Total, it's not like I'm going to ever walk up to a, be, to a girl and be like, what's up, baby? What's up, girl? You want to discuss the Ukrainian crisis right now? Shit's getting real in Syria, right? Let's talk about the ramifications of those actions. I've got a thesis for you, baby. This got stupid real fast. <laughs> like in Harvard circles, they're correcting their monocles and drinking tea and be like, mm, his humorous anecdotes are very stupid. All right, that got even dumber. My bad, everybody. I'm sorry. Sorry I went there. My bad. So I put myself through college. I'm not in debt, which is cool. Uh, yeah, thank you, Sal. I'm not in debt. And, uh, you know, it was, it was tough. I did a lot of odd jobs. I did a lot of odd jobs when I went to college. Uh, and I was always looking for work, looking for extra work. One time there was a biker rally in Reno, where I'm from. And uh, one of my buddies who worked at the Circus Circus was like, Hey, Matt, you want to work security for this biker rally? And I was like, listen, I know the beard screams badass, but the tie and the glasses straight scream giant pussy. So I don't know if I'll be able to do that. On the side of the Circus Circus, it said, Welcome Street Vibrations, which is the name of the, uh, the biker rally. No colors. Is it no gang colors, you know? And can you imagine me standing at the front of a casino trying to stop a biker guy from getting in there and be like, Hey, man, no colors. He'd be like, What the hell did you just say to me, boy? I'd be like, Cute vest. Proceed. Try not to rape anybody. So uh, I was super poor going through college. I was so poor at one point that uh, buying new clothes wasn't even a, new, a good investment for me. You know, I, uh, I, uh, every guy's heard the joke where they don't buy new underwear. They just let it disintegrate off their body as time goes by. And that's totally true because the underwear I'm wearing right now for this very show looks like a flag after a Civil War battle, okay? <laughs> It's not even underwear at this point. It's just a dick curtain I wake up and swing over every morning. Time to start my day. You people having a conversation in the back just missed a great dick curtain joke. There's so much art happening right here tonight. So I work with children, which is a great juxtaposition after I say the words dick curtain a lot. But I'm a teacher, I work with kids. Kids are cool, kids are super cute. I'm a second grade teacher. One time this kid came up to me, he's like, Mr. Wiegand, I really like this girl. How do I get her to like me back? I was like, write her a poem. Because elementary school is the only time you can do that without looking creepy. So now's the time, son. <laughs> he rises to this poem, it goes like this. Roses are red, violets are blue. Would you like to eat pizza at my house this weekend? Circle yes or no. Super cute, right? Kids can also be giant assholes. They don't know it. They don't understand it. One time this kid came up to me. He was like, Mr. Wiegand, uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was like, I want to be a stand-up comedian. He was like, ooh, seems like a waste of time. <laughs> Why don't you go back to school, get your engineering degree? I was like, shut up, Mom. What do you want to be when you grow up, kid? He was like, either a cowboy or a hippopotamus. I'm like, that's cool. You win again, kid. You win again. <laughs> One time, sometimes, sometimes kids really surprise the hell out of you with what they say. Like, uh, this happened about two weeks ago. Uh, one of my kids raised his hand, looked at me dead in the eye, and said, Mr. Wigan, when did God die? 
how do I answer this? Better be honest. Uh, it's different for everybody, but God died for me when I was in college and I found my girlfriend sleeping with my roommate. <laughs> But it's going to be different for you. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, me being a, I'm a single guy, and me being a single guy in a job environment surrounded and dominated by women, uh, I'm getting matched up a lot. A lot of the ladies at my work are trying to... Uh, hook me up and play matchmaker, you know? And they're all married. They're like, Matt, you're 27. It's time for you to settle down. Time for you to find a wife. And I said, I don't know if I'm ready to do that. They're like, whoa, well, I understand that commitment can be kind of scary. And I'm like, I'm not worried about commitment. I'm worried about smugly talking down to all my single friends now. I don't know if I'm ready to do that. I told that joke way better last night. <laughs> uh, let's see. But I did go on a date. Uh, two weeks ago, did go on a date. Yeah, it was uh, it was cool. It wasn't a very good date. It wasn't a very good date. In the first conversation that we had, she told me that she's terrified of the male organ. I said, I'm terrified of taking this relationship any farther. <laughs> but when you think about it, when you think about it, guys, on a scale of pretty things in the universe, dicks are way the fuck at the bottom. There's like porcupine fetuses and dicks right there. <laughs> That's right, second graders looking me up on YouTube. I'm your teacher. I just said fetus and dicks. But uh, let's see. How does that? Can you? All right, let's do this for science. Let's do this for science. I'm gonna prove that dicks are super weird. Uh, pretend you've never seen a penis in your entire life. You just you get off of work. You're walking down the street. You might go bowling. You might go to the movie theater. And a dick just beams down in front of you from space. You've never seen one in your entire life. You'd just be like, oh, my God, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's like an arrow and a mushroom and some ball bearings. Oh, and it's been infected with Grandpa's ear hair. Oh, my God. Oh, it's covered in elbow skin. Jesus. <laughs> Captain Kirk wouldn't even fight that shit, guys. So uh, this girl that I went on a date with, I really like this girl. I really like this girl a lot. So I got all gussied up. You know, I put on my new shirt, my lucky shoes, my show off my dick jeans. And as I'm, as I'm walking out of my house, my roommate looks at me. He goes, hey, Matt, your ball's called. They want their personal space back. I look back at him, and he'd be playing Xbox 360 all day. I said, hey, roommate, your virginity called. Said it's coming to party. <laughs> he looks back at me. He's like, hey, Matt, David Bowie from Labyrinth called. He said, nice. <laughs> all right, I think I've told all the jokes I want to tell tonight. Thank you very much, guys. My name's Matt Wiegand. <laughs> <laughs>